Welcome to our presentation. Our presentation is about glycogen synthase kinase 3. GSK3 comes in two forms, alpha and beta, and is found on chromosome 19. The alpha form is larger than the beta form, but 85% of the homology is shared. There's a higher concentration of GSK3 beta found in the cell than GSK3 alpha. This is because it's not just in the cytosol, but also in the nucleus and the mitochondria. GSK3 has been linked to many cellular roles, but today we're focusing on glucose metabolism and its effect on insulin resistance. Both the alpha and beta forms have been linked to insulin resistance, mainly through experimentation with the use of inhibitors which are non-specific. Elevated concentrations of GSK3 are found in the skeletal muscle tissue of those with poorly managed type 2 diabetes. Previous experiments have investigated the feasibility of knocking out either form of GSK3 at the fetal stage and has been discovered that GSK3 beta is essential whereas GSK3 alpha isn't. This group's previous experiment was in observing the effects of alpha manipulation on glucose metabolism and insulin resistance. This particular paper was a report on a repeat experiment manipulating the beta form of GSK3. For this presentation we will be looking at two methods. First one is protein extraction. After treatment, the cell were washed in serum-free alpha MEM containing 0.1% BSA and incubated for 15 minutes at 37 degrees Celsius in the presence or absence of insulin. Following this treatment, separate samples of cells in six well plates were rapidly washed in 4 degrees Celsius PBS and then lysed in extraction buffer. Cells were scraped from the plate and solubilized over 30 minutes in 4 degrees Celsius with vortexin. The non solubilized material was removed by centrifugation for 10 minutes. Protein concentration was determined according to the methods of Bradford, and cell extracts were stored at 70 degrees Celsius until further analysis. The second method is electrophoresis and western blotting. Protein extracts were size fractioned on 7.5% or 10% polyacrylamide gels. Proteins were transferred to intracellulose blocked and incubated with antibody to the particular protein of interest. Bands were visualized Bands were visualized using secondary antibody tagged with Horsodos peroxide. For analysis of GSK3 and protein kinase phosphorylation, membranes were first probed with an antibody against the specific phosphorylated protein, then stripped and reprobed for total protein. Result. The first result is regulation of glycogen synthesis. The consequences of down-regulating GSK3 beta expression on GS were evaluated at the level of activity. Activities measured in the presence of a maximum concentration of the allosteric regulation glucose 6-phosphate is independent of the phosphorylation state of glycogen synthesis and can serve as a surrogate for the total amount of enzyme. Reducing GSK3 beta expression had no effect on total glycogen synthesis activity in muscle cells. Down regulation of GSK3 beta led to increase in, G in glycogen synthesis in the absence of insulin, reducing GSK3 beta expression also improved insulin action. The graph below shows the effects of GSK3 beta knockdown on glycogen synthesis activity. The second result is regulation of glucose uptake. Unlike the behavior of glycogen synthesis, Reducing GSK3 beta expression had no statistically significant effect 
on basal glucose uptake in muscle cells. In controlled cell acute insulin exposure result in a modest but statistically significant stimulation of uptake. Unlike the case with GSK3 alpha, GSK3 beta knockdown did not up did not appreciably alter absolute insulin stimulated activity. However, the absolute insulin response determined as the individual increment in uptake over basal with the acute insulin treatment was more than double when GSK3 beta expression was reduced. And you can see that on the graph below, which is the effect of GSK3 beta lockdown on glucose uptake activity. The results aren't consistent with all available research, most notably research conducted in other species, usually mice. Mice have a much higher proportion of GSK3 beta compared to GSK3 alpha, up to 80%, whereas only between 50 and 60% in humans is the beta isoform. Although results are still compared against mouse data in the analysis, this is taken into account. As stated in the results, GSK3 beta did not have a significant effect on GS activation. However, in basal state, as the fractional velocity of GS increased, GS activity seemed to fall. Previous research has linked GSK3 to GS activation, and between the experiments conducted by this group, it has now been shown that only an increase in GSK3 beta causes this. It can be seen that GSK3 is definitely an important regulator in glucose metabolism and insulin resistance. Difference between the results of experiments conducted in human skeletal muscle cells in culture and those in vivo in lab animals such as mice, coupled with the knowledge of different concentrations of GSK3 isoforms in humans and animals, suggests that more research should be conducted on human cells. GSK3 alpha and GSK3 beta seem to perform their purposes in different ways. Their difference in structure allows GSK3 alpha to phosphorylate IRS1, whereas GSK3 beta doesn't. The location of GSK3 beta in the mitochondria and the nucleus may also function differently to all of GSK3 in the cytosol. GSK3 beta is likely to help control GS activity in the absence of insulin. However, results are indicative of other factors. Further experimentation on human cells could provide a further understanding of regulators in glucose metabolism and insulin resistance, and could aid in the development of therapeutic aid for those with type 2 diabetes.